Hi, this is Wael with Seville Combatives. I'm here with my usual training partner, Chris. Connor's behind the camera. And I have two guests with me today. I have my longtime training partner and friend, Bruce Witsit, and one of his students, Andrew. So tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm uh, an EMT. I've uh, been working in EMS for about a year and been training with Bruce since Long I was time. about 15 years old. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still a beginner. How do you know? I'm 23. So Bruce tells me that you've had occasion to use your skills on the job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you tell me about one of those uh, one of those incidents? Yeah, um, I I used your lock flow three times. Um, with variations. Oh, of the he's referring to the 20 joint lock flow. Link in the description below. <laughs> um, and yeah, it worked great. Um, uh, the first time um, we had a patient who was. Um, had a, uh, a medical condition where they were chronically um, unable to communicate and unable to process. Right. Uh, they were dangerous to um, the people surrounding them and to us and to themselves. So was the person acting out physically in some way? And he, got, he was moving. Um, He's moving around, moving the, his arms and his legs. And so I'm that guy, I'm moving around. I'm so I went ahead and with this. I grabbed an arm and I, I entered into an elevated wrist lock, like so. I was able to escort him. Okay, so what he's putting on here is what he, what I used to call an elevated wrist lock nowadays. I usually call it a corkscrew lock. Um, it's a common, in Aikido, this is Sankyo, it's a common lock found in Aikido, Jiu Jitsu, Hapkido. And it's basically twisting the wrist inward, and it makes sometimes makes the person want to move backward. But because he's controlling my elbow fairly well, there's nowhere for me to go. So yeah, I'm going. So uh, we were able to walk to our gurney. Uh, we had I had assistance about four other people. Um, we got him down on the gurney. He he didn't want to lay back, so I I switched to your um, to horizontal. You did it horizontal. Yeah, to this lock. Let's turn this way. So he just angled it from here to this way, and this way it makes me want to go back. It makes me literally want to lie down on my back. So we got him laid back on our, on our flat, and we were able to restrain him. He stayed safe, we stayed safe, uh, the bystanders stayed safe, and everyone was happy. So. Very nice, very nice. So show me uh, in slow motion how you got into that. So I entered by, I grabbed the, the wrist, and I, I bent the elbow. And you went under the arm. And I on the foot. Oh, you step on the foot too. So that keeps me from circling backward, which this lock makes me want to do. Okay, you can let that go now. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> the other one was a patient that was, this patient was malevolent. <laughs> uh, and we already had a patient on a gurney. Um, this patient was already uh, restrained. Um, the patient got out of restraints and bit my hand. Um, I ended up going for an arm bar and I was able to, I attempted to, to get into an arm bar and this patient uh, bent the wrist and so I went straight into a Z-lock and was able to hold them until help could get there. Yeah, right. The patient got their hand uh, out of the gurney, they, they leaned forward and they bit my left wrist ah! and so I went ahead and I got, I went into an arm bar and they bent their arm and I went into a wrist lock and... Okay, so back to the arm bar for a second. So a lot of people, when they feel that you're trying to control their arm here, will basically try to pull out of that by pulling their arm away. Good, yes. And so they put themselves in a Z-lock, which drives, which basically drives you back. It drives you back and down. So uh, in our ambulance, there's a wall here where we keep our equipment and I was able to use the, the Z-lock to push them back against the wall, they stayed safe, I stayed safe. Um, any others you want to tell us about? Yeah, I had a, I had, so the patient was laying on the back, very strong and very dangerous, um, just naturally very strong. And so we had the patient in swimmer's position where we restrained their arms like so. Uh, uh, no, just one arm down, this arm up, um, restraints on the, on the feet, restraints on both the wrists. Um, Patient, um, it took. Why do you use that particular position? Um, I, it seems to help. Uh, one, they can't lean forward. If they have both the wrists down, they can lean forward. So it gives us access because we sit 
on this side of the patient because mm -hmm. it's access for blood pressures. Oh, right, uh, okay. The restraint that was applied onto this wrist uh, was a little too tight. It was like a tourniquet, uh, so we needed to adjust it. And so, um, you know, this patient, it took four 225 pound men to restrain, and I was able to keep him controlled by, uh, by making a, a reverse gooseneck and a finger split and uh, just held this and I was able to keep him from from uh, moving out. Um, I did the restraint. Okay, can I, adjust Chris, it. can I have you lie down with your head toward the camera? Um, sure. And you can, show, you can show on the camera what you did there. So, uh, the restraint's up like this. I just went underneath for like a, like a shoulder lock and I did a, a reverse gooseneck with a finger split. Um, and why do you split the fingers like that? Um, you know, it for me, I it uh, it kind of scares me when I have my fingers split. And it, mm -hmm. It's you know, it's not it's not dangerous. It makes a person less likely to resist, is what you're saying. They're yeah. afraid they're going to break their fingers. Right. Well, cool. Thanks very much. I really appreciate you coming by and sharing these stories. And thank you, Bruce, um, for bringing him over. He's your grandkid. <laughs> <laughs> he taught me, I taught him. So there you go, some practical applications of these locks. So anyway, please subscribe for more. Thank you. And that's a wrap.